here today, Pregnant Pauses, we are with the super talented, amazing Jewel Olympian, <laughs> mother of two and a little bit. Yeah, two and a half. <laughs> we have a, uh, um, a married to what I understand is a Clio Bachelor of the Year. <laughs> I'd rather say four-time Olympian, Olympian and captain of the men's Australian water polo team, Thomas Whalen. But he's pretty hot, right? Uh, yes, I think I've done very well. <laughs> yeah. You just keep having a lot of babies, so it's working out. <laughs> we do, we do. And having babies is a great thing. Now let's talk about um, pregnant pause. You are an ambassador for pregnant pause, and that is an awesome thing. What do you think of pregnant pause? What do you make of it? What's the idea from your perspective? So pregnant pause in a nutshell is something that I am fiercely passionate about because more people, particularly in Australia, need to understand that drinking when you're pregnant is just not cool, people. Um, Australians battle enough to handle their own alcohol, so let alone when you're pregnant. So this is a great initiative alerting people that when you are pregnant, do you know what? It's pretty cool to stop drinking for the 10 months, the 40 weeks that you're pregnant, and we are encouraging spouses, partners, husbands, people around you to join the cause as well and support you in it. So tell me what you know about FASD. Did you know about it before? Did you know the idea of fetal alcohol spectrum disorders? I mean, you're a smart girl, you're, you know all this stuff. You're, were you aware of it? I certainly was aware of it, but you're always hearing the other cases of premature babies, you know, born super early or, or other kind of complicated cases. So no, this is really coming to light. And again, it was another reason I wanted to jump on board because whilst I knew a little bit about it, I didn't know a whole lot. So um, just reading the articles that Pregnant Pulse has been doing, which has been fantastic, and the media they've been getting as well is actually showing light that still in today's world, educated Australian women who are going to private obstetricians are still drinking through pregnancy and you know we're out here saying don't do it I'm the first to say don't do it don't drink it's not worth it now how, what's the attitude amongst your girlfriends I guess is it is it um, you've, you've been pregnant now for what, 37 years in a row <laughs> nearly yeah. is it has it changed do you think in the last five years is are Australians warming to this idea or, or how do you see it I actually think Australians are becoming more relaxed about the idea of thinking, do you know what, this is my third pregnancy, you know, as it is to me, it would be all right right now where we are, beautiful Catalinas, to, you know, order a lovely glass of wine. I don't, I really don't know how I feel about that because we know so much of the damage of what it's done, exactly what you said with FASDA as well. But not only that as well, you're also showing other people that it is okay to drink through pregnancy. We've, we've uncovered some pretty amazing stats around just the influence that, I mean, that makes sense, right? If you're sitting here having lunch and, and, and Thomas is sitting there thinking, you know what, it'd be awesome, a beer. And you're thinking exactly the same thing. Yeah. If he goes, you know what, actually, how about we just both skip it? Does that actually, does it make a difference? Can he be involved in helping you make a, a good decision? Oh, absolutely. I think that shows the strength and a character of a man. Um, I think it shows their wisdom. I think it shows their, their capacity as well. And it shows their absolute support. You know, I can clearly say to you, Troy, that there's two things I always miss when I'm pregnant. That's cold prawns and a really lovely bottle of French champagne. And I love being able to say that openly because as soon as our baby comes out and, you know, I kind of juggle the breastfeeding and know that it, I know it takes kind of one glass, it takes four hours to get out of your system after you breastfeed. If I can just have one sip of that French champagne and a couple of prawns, that's something that I kind of feel like is my gift to me for waiting those nine months. Um, but Thomas is amazing as well. And I must admit, we always say alcohol, coffee and dessert should always be shared with someone. So it's never as fun if you're just sitting there drinking by yourself and your spouse isn't. So I think it's, it's amazing that what this campaign PP is doing, Pregnant Pause is doing, is actually encouraging fathers and spouses to say, come on guys, don't just use the line of, hey, I've got a designated driver for another nine months. Support your wife, get fit and get healthy as well. Don't you become pregnant in the process. Exactly right. I think this is awesome. Now, do you, um, what, do you ho what do you hope for the Pregnant Pause campaign? Do you think it, it can sort of get into the Australian consciousness that there's something like that the dad or the dad-to-be can get involved and actually play a, play a role during pregnancy? Do you think, what do you, what do you hope for pregnant pause? My hopes for pregnant pause is that it, there definitely is more awareness. If we can get this kind of in mainstream papers, TVs, you know, you're getting ambassadors up there with a voice who have experience of, of having babies or being around kind of the media industry and seeing, you know, where the circulation of alcohol is going because it is freely available in Australia and I can... I can confidently say that I don't think Australians know how to handle their alcohol very well at all, let alone when they're pregnant. Um, the other big thing for me, Troy, is um, since coming on board with Pregnant Pause, my obstetrician actually told me a story that he actually has some patients who will pay top dollar to see him because he's a private ob, yet they'll still drink through pregnancy. 
the stats show that it's kind of 35 year old women that are professional that are sort of educated that have gotten to the habit like I have certainly of like a you know half a bottle of wine a couple of times a week after work it's part of the thing um, that's been a real surprise to me too that that's a real thing like it's a Sydney issue it's a Melbourne issue just as much as it is anywhere else I do, and I, I find that a lot of women who've had multiple children actually think they know what they're doing. Um, I was just saying to you before, just off camera, that this is my third pregnancy and I actually there's been no need or want at all for alcohol. Like, yes, I'll get really excited. If we have a boy, you know, we'll get one champagne out or a girl, a, a pink bottle of champagne, and, you know, I have a sip or glass of it, but there's been no... This is a gift and a miracle, and I think, first of all, being involved with pregnant pause, I, I find is a humbling and, and, and a blessed experience because I feel that I, I'm blessed to say that I'm, I'm carrying a child. In Sydney now, you're kind of talking to every second or third woman that either cannot fall pregnant or is going through IVF or has fertility treatment. So the people that are falling pregnant, come on, let's take care of our bodies. So Elka Whalen, the super magnificent, ridiculously lovely Elka Whalen, thank you for joining us at Pregnant Pause today. Thank you. We ask everyone to get on board. If you have friends, you know friends, you know husbands and wives who are either doing the wrong thing or right thing, get people involved with pregnant pause and um, you know learn more about it. It's very important. You're a legend. Thanks, Elka. Thank you. Man.